Hello and welcome back and today I want to talk about the some might say dull subject of external USB storage drives. It's a subject that although everyone has experience of external hard drives or SSDs I don't really talk about a lot on the channel for two main reasons. One there's not a lot that can be said about an external drive. It's you know it's storage it's connected to typically via USB, but of course Thunderbolt options are available. And the difference between one drive and another is generally very, very small. And so much so that most users don't really find much distinction between the drives. And although they will obviously err towards the best value, in other words, the most they're getting for their money, more so than anything, they will look at capacity as kind of the king of the external drive, whether it's for backing up or for just working for different projects on the go and swapping them all out. The second reason I don't talk about external storage that much is that external storage via, you know, USB, I generally find quite fallible. I'll be completely straight with you. I generally carry a USB drive on me at all times. Little USB drive there, little store tech one, and I carry that, but this is used as an encryption key for a few devices out there. I don't really use it for storage because I use NAS, don't I? I use remote level storage. I use multi-tiered cloud storage. And when I do integrate a USB drive into my own personal storage system, I will utilize it, one, for backing up content from my consoles, or two, I'll be using it as another tier of the backup strategy on my NAS. So I've got a remote access, I've got a USB access and stuff like that. However, occasionally here on the channel, I will talk about USB drives when one takes my fancy. And in the past, I've talked about this one, the SanDisk external SSD, one that I use for shoots. I've talked about this, the GTEC Armor ATD that I talked about last year because it's an incredibly rugged drive with large capacity. And I've talked about this, my GTEC. This has been in the background. This is my GTEC mobile drive that I utilize for a lot of my recorded footage when I do outside stuff. And it's a Thunderbolt drive. Those are the drives that I do utilize. However, this is something that not only I'm now going to introduce into my own USB storage systems, but it's almost certainly going to replace one or even two of the drives here on the table. This is the Sabrent Rocket Nano. This is a reason why sometimes when I make a video, something excites me enough that I'm more excited about the video than actually using the damn thing. And this is a good drive, but there's things about it that make it fantastically unique in the world of USB drives that make it definitely worthy of its own standalone video. I'm gonna be talking about this in conjunction with uh, the PlayStation 5 and logical external backups and speeds. And I'm gonna be talking about one of these in a destruction video series that I'm working on for early 2022, where we're gonna be taking devices that can withstand flooding, withstand frost, withstand fire, withstand physical damage. Um, this is um, going to be featured in that. But the reason I wanna talk about more than anything today is that it ticks some unusual boxes for me. This is the 2TB Rocket Nano. There is a Pro Series out there as well that goes up to 4TB. But the Rocket Nano is a USB 3.2 Gen 2 external drive. That means it can be supported by um, up to 1,000 megabytes per second. It's also supported by Thunderbolt, of course. Um, and this arriving at 2TB knocks around for about $299 right now. It's also available in a half gig model uh, around about $100 to $109. And there's a 2TB model for about under 200, uh, sorry, 150 to about $159. So before we go any further, let's talk about that price point there, $299 for 2TB. Now, on the face of it, seems like quite a lot, doesn't it? 2TB for, um, you know, nigh on 300 nicker when you can pick up a 2TB hard drive for about 50 quid. So, you know, something like 40 to 50 quid. So it seems like a lot of money there. How is this justifying that? Well, one of the main ways it's justifying it is it's NVMe SSD storage inside. Now, yes, you have an external bottleneck there, arguably bottlenecks, not, probably not the right word, but it has a 1000 megabytes per second external performance there. So NVMe is already provide to three, three and a half thousand and even all the way up in PCI Gen 4, up to six or 7,000 megabytes per second there. However, that NVMe is still gonna have a phenomenal response time, thereby maxing out that 1000 on the read and the write, not just sequential, but random and just general use. You're always gonna be maxing out high 900s to 1000 every time you utilize it. The other thing that NVMe SSDs bring to the table, if we open up this frankly very pretty external display box, is it allows 
for smaller drives. This is the size of this 2TB NVMe SSD. It's an aluminium casing that works not only as heat dissipation for the NVMe, but also as solid protection. This is a very hefty drive. I'm sorry if that came up on the mic there. Once again, to bring that to the camera nice and close, it's a USB Type-C connector there. And if we look at the USB drive, this USB is 64 gig. This is 2000 gig. Look at the size difference between them. Not a lot, is there? And that's the first big takeaway. This is almost certainly going to be replacing this in my pocket for a lot of those security protocols and more. It's a tiny drive that takes advantage of USB 3.2 Gen 2 over Type-C, which means that I can utilize it on a multitude of older and newer devices. The other thing worth highlighting with this drive is it also arrives with um, double strength USB cables there. It goes into USB-C to USB-C and again that is a Thunderbolt equipped cable as well so you've got the power but on top of that you've got USB 3.2 Gen 2 USB here at type A to type C so you've got the cables at the right length and they're not hugely long cables they're short cables which is that exactly what you want for a compact drive like this. Now this drive also let's face it with that larger storage there of 2TB means I'm going to be able to carry a significant amount of data in a small pocket. You know that tiny little pocket above your actual pockets on your jeans? This fits in that quite neatly. Now on top of that, let's bring back those other drives from earlier. I mentioned earlier on, remember this is $299 give or take depending on where you shop around. So let's go through all of the drives that I've just spoke about. Now this is a 2TB SAN disk drive. It's USB 3.2 Gen 2. You know, it's a 2TB drive. You know, it's larger, let's face it, it's definitely larger. It's a little thinner, but it's definitely larger overall. I can't put that in my pocket, really, logically. I can put it in one of the normal pockets, but I don't really want to do that. It's got a belt clip. Um, this drive, I've, uh, you know, I purchased quite a while ago, currently retails for $260. Remember that, $260 for this drive, $299 for this drive. This one is absolutely tiny. It also takes advantage of a higher quality NAND inside. This drive takes advantage of uh, 3D TLC NAND inside there, but it's 64 layer. This takes advantage of 96 layer. So again, better quality NAND there inside on that SSD. And again, remember, in terms of protection, you've got heat dissipation built into this. And this, on the other hand, is a plastic coated drive. It's gonna have this uh, dust resistance, but it's not going to dissipate the heat as well. Next up, let's bring up that USB drive once again. Now, in terms of standard USBs that you can fit in your pocket, you can get two TB USBs, but they're rubbish. They use a file format that no one uses. They're fake. We did a whole video about it back in 2019 about fake two TB USB drives. We're going to look at real two TB drives that, uh, or real storage USB drives that actually give you what you're looking for. Currently. The stablest, most affordable home user SS, um, sorry, uh, USB on the market is from um, SanDisk. You can pick up um, SanDisk Ultra USB. The maximum size currently is 512 gigabytes on a USB, and that knocks around for about $50 for that USB. So remember, that's half a gig for $50, and that provides you up to 130 megabytes per second. So that means... If you were to try to get 2TB in a drive like this, if it was going to be the SanDisk Ultra there, that means you're going to spend $200 for four different USB sticks that provide 130 megabytes per second, and that's spreading your storage. And again, that tiny little drive, only a fraction larger of a single USB, $300. So again, yes, it's costing a little bit more, but what you're getting at 1,000 megabytes per second in a single SSD massively trances a USB drive in your pocket. We'll go to the next drive. Let's have a look at my GTEC. This is a GTEC Armor ATD, remember? And in 2TB, this knocks around for about $99 currently when it's on offer. Other than that, it does also retail for a little higher normally, but a 2TB model of this is $100. Let's just call it 100 flat, so a third of the cost of this. But again, that means you're only getting up to 130 to 140 megabytes per second, whereas this is giving you 1,000. Yes, it's cheaper, but it's cheaper 
but slower and larger and bulkier, and it uses a mechanical hard drive. If you get one of these with the SSD inside, it brings the price up to 240 to 260 which again, massively means for 30 or 40 dollars you're getting faster when even the ssd version of this drive will only give you six to seven hundred megabytes per second and finally we end it on the fastest drive of them all this is the mobile pro now i'll be straight with you compared to these two drive this is definitely the faster this one can spit out up to 2800 megabytes per second over thunderbolt it's also available in 2TB as well. The size of it, it's only a fraction, sorry, it's actually being utilized for other processes. The size of that drive is only a fraction smaller than this one. It's got a built-in heat sink and it uses NVMEs inside. However, for all of those pros, the 2TB model of the um, GTEC Mobile Pro is $650 currently for 2TB. That's more than double the cost of this. Yes, you get faster performance, but it only works on Thunderbolt. It's not supported on USB. You can't, it's not backwards compatible. It's Thunderbolt only. Otherwise, it has to play with the protocol and lowers the speed. So you can't use it into USB 3.2 Gen 2. It's Thunderbolt only, and it's more restrictive. So this is obviously still going to stay in my lineup. But right now, this drive is providing performance better than the other USB options out there. And the price point, once you break it down into what you're getting for your money, makes it a very appealing drive. Now, I called this a review, but it's not really a review. It's a question of looking at what you need and what you get for your money these days, because I think USB external hard drive, USB external SSDs, and even the little USB keys still exist. And they're always going to exist in terms of utility and how useful they're going to be to us. However, this is a giant combination of all a lot of those features. And I think this can do an exceptional job of replacing a lot of the different storage tiers in your life. It's certainly going to replace the drive I carry in my pocket. And if you see me at a trade show, ask me. I'm willing to bet I pull this out of my pocket. But on top of that, it's probably going to replace one or even two other tiers of storage in my life in that drive. Now, a lot of you might argue you shouldn't, you know, remove backup tiers. These aren't backup tiers. Some of these drives have all got different purposes. I've already got a three-tier backup system in place. And this is going to be utilized within two different versions. And it's still only going to take up that tiny little top pocket on my jeans. So I can't recommend it enough. Now, stay tuned for the follow-up video coming very, very soon, where we're going to look at the Pro Series drive. And we're going to be knocking it around a little bit. We're going to be testing just how protective it is against the likes of physical damage, frost, and even heat. Now, I've looked on Sabrent's website top and bottom. They in times mention IP66 protection, but they don't say how much this drive can stand. So when I do knock it around, I'm fairly certain someone at Sabrent's going to be like, whoa, whoa, what are you doing? I don't care. We're going to knock one of these drives around because if you're going to be someone that's going to carry a drive like this on you or you're going to stick it in the bottom of your bag and pull it out occasionally, you know, to accidentally spill coffee on it or to accidentally smash it against the side of a train door when you're in a rush, I want to know that this drive can take those knocks. So again, stay tuned for that video. But otherwise, thank you so much for watching. This has been the hardware review of the Sabrent Rocket Nano. We will be doing some uh, speed performance testing with the PS5 and NAS to show that it can spit out that 1000 megs. Also remember, the PS5 has a USB 3.2 Gen 2 port on it. So if you're going to use it for PS4 games, that's 1000 meg uh, USB for you to utilize there. And we will be covering that in our testing but otherwise thank you so much for watching click like if you've enjoyed the video subscribe if you want to learn more use the free advice section over on nas compares if you want to make sure that you get the right data story solution for you right first time genuinely free we don't do anything with your email couldn't give a toss about your email to be perfectly honest and there are donate buttons there to use or ignore it's totally up to you it's manned by two humans me and eddie the web guy we answer every single inquiry to the best of our ability and we don't use any bias. It might take us an extra day or so because we're humans with lives, but we do try our very hardest. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.